Hello everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving deep into the life and career of one of Hollywood's most beloved icons, Jerry Orbosch. While many remember him as the no-nonsense detective on the long-running hit series Law & Order, Orbach's career was much more than just one role. He made his mark in both television and film, building a reputation as a versatile and talented actor. But his story goes beyond the screen. In this video, we'll explore the impressive fortune he built during his decades in the spotlight. Take a look at the abandoned home he once owned, and reflect on the difficult and emotional circumstances that surrounded his untimely passing. So, stay with us as we pay tribute to Jerry Orbach's incredible legacy, celebrating the man who not only entertained millions, but left an indelible mark on the entertainment world. Jerry Orbach, a beloved American actor and singer, was best known for his iconic roles on both Broadway and television. At the time of his death in 2004, his net worth was estimated to be $10 million. Orbach's income came from a variety of sources, primarily his work in theater and television. He gained widespread acclaim and financial success for his role as Detective Lenny Briscoe on the hit show Law & Order, where he reportedly earned $100,000 per episode in later seasons. The role became a defining part of his career, spanning over a decade and making him one of television's most recognizable faces. In addition to his television work, Orbach has had a successful career on Broadway, originating roles in popular productions such as Chicago and 42nd Street, which have also contributed significantly to his wealth. Over the years, his acting and singing talents have brought him a steady income from both performances and royalties, making him a well-known figure in the entertainment industry. Jerry Orbach, born October 20, 1935, in the Bronx, New York City, grew up in a family with a deep connection to the performing arts. His father, Leon Orbach, was a restaurateur and vaudeville performer, while his mother, Emily, was a radio singer and greeting card maker. Although his father was Jewish, Orbach was raised in his mother's Roman Catholic faith. His childhood was filled with traveling, living in various cities, including Mount Vernon, New York, Scranton, Pennsylvania, and Springfield, Massachusetts. They eventually settled in Waukegan, Illinois, where Jerry attended Waukegan High School. There, he balanced his studies with sports, playing football for the school's football team. After graduating, Orbach took a summer job at the Chevy Chase Country Club in Wheeling, Illinois, before enrolling at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. His academic journey was brief, as he transferred to Northwestern University only to leave college before completing his senior year. Driven by his passion for acting, he moved to New York City and joined the prestigious Actors Studio to hone his craft. In 1955, Orbach made his first foray into the entertainment industry with uncredited roles in the films Guys and Dolls and Marty. That same year, he made his stage debut in the Three Penny Opera, marking the start of what would become a legendary career in both film and theater. Jerry Orbach's made his first significant appearance on the silver screen in the 1961 biographical crime drama, Mad Dog Call. This early role helped him secure subsequent parts in films like Ensign Pulver and the comedy John Goldfarb, Please Come Home. Orbach's breakthrough as a leading man came in 1971 when he starred as Salvatore Palumbo, a quirky gangster, in the crime comedy The Gang That Couldn't Shoot Straight. Throughout the 1970s, he continued to build his filmography, appearing in comedies such as A Fan's Notes and Foreplay, as well as the supernatural thriller The Sentinel and the ensemble comedy Underground Aces. However, it was in 1981 that Orbach 
delivered one of his most critically acclaimed performances in Sidney Lumet's neo-noir crime drama, Prince of the City. His portrayal of Gus Levy, a corrupt NYPD narcotics detective, earned widespread praise for its intensity and depth. As the 1980s progressed, Orbach starred in a range of genres, from the comedy Brewster's Millions to the action-packed FX. One of his most iconic roles during this period was as Jake Hausman, the protective father in the beloved romantic dance film, Dirty Dancing. He also appeared in the crime thriller, Someone to Watch Over Me, and the comedy, I Love N.Y. Orbach ended the decade on a high note with performances in Last Exit to Brooklyn and Woody Allen's critically acclaimed Crimes and Misdemeanors. In 1991, he enjoyed a particularly successful year, appearing in seven films, including the fantasy comedy A Gnome Named Gnorm, the action film Out for Justice, and the comedy Delirious. However, it was his role as Lumiere, the charming French-accented candlestick in Disney's animated classic Beauty and the Beast, that cemented his place in popular culture. His rendition of Be Our Guest became one of the film's most memorable moments. Jerry Orbach's film career extended into the 1990s and early 2000s, where he showcased his talent in a variety of roles across different genres. He starred in notable films such as Straight Talk, a comedy drama where he played a central character, and action-packed hits like Universal Soldier. In Mr. Saturday Night, Orbach demonstrated his ability to switch seamlessly between genres, balancing drama with comedy. His versatility wasn't limited to live-action roles. Orbach also lent his distinct voice to animated films, including The Road to El Dorado, where his vocal performance brought life to the character. Beyond these major films, Orbach appeared in smaller projects such as Chinese Coffee and Mana from Heaven. His final film appearance came in 2004 with Protesters, where he portrayed a police detective, closing out an impressive cinematic career that spanned decades, leaving a lasting impact on both the big screen and television. Orbach's television career was equally remarkable, spanning over 40 years and filled with a variety of roles that displayed his depth as an actor. His first television appearance was in the 1961 movie 24 Hours in a Woman's Life, marking the start of a long and evolving presence on TV. Six years later, he revisited a familiar role in the TV adaptation of Annie Get Your Gun, reprising his performance from the stage version. During those years, Orbach became a regular guest on many popular television series, such as Love, American Style, Medical Center, Kojak, and Buck Rogers in the 25th century. His gift for portraying memorable characters was especially evident when he took on the role of Harry McGraw, a private detective in Murder, She Wrote. The character was so popular that it earned Orbach his own spin-off series, The Law and Harry McGraw, which ran from 1987 to 1988. Orbach's contributions to television didn't go unnoticed. He earned his first Emmy nomination in 1990 for his guest role on The Golden Girls and followed that with another nomination two years later for his supporting role in Broadway Bound. However, it was his portrayal of NYPD homicide detective Lenny Briscoe on Law and Order that catapulted him to international fame. Orbach joined the cast in 1992 and became a fixture of the show, playing Briscoe for over 11 seasons until 2004. His sharp wit, dry humor, and nuanced performance made him one of the longest-serving and most beloved characters in the show's history. In 2000, Orbach earned an Emmy nomination for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Drama Series, and in 2004, his legacy was cemented with a posthumous Screen Actors Guild Award. Beyond Law and Order, Orbach reprised his role 
as Lenny Briscoe on various spin-offs and crossover shows, including Homicide, Life on the Street, Special Victims Unit, Criminal Intent, and Trial by Jury, solidifying his place as one of television's most iconic crime fighters. Personal Life Jerry Orbach's personal life was marked by both love and family ties. He married Marta Curro in 1958, and together they welcomed two sons, Anthony Nicholas and Christopher Benjamin. Their marriage ended in divorce in 1975, but the bond with his children remained strong. His eldest son, Tony, has made a name for himself as a construction manager and is also an accomplished crossword puzzle creator, having published over 25 puzzles in the New York Times. The younger son, Chris, has followed in his father's footsteps in the performing arts. He is an actor and singer known for portraying Ken Briscoe, the nephew of Lenny Briscoe, in the first season of Law and Order Special Victims Unit. In 1979, Jerry Orbach found love once again when he married Broadway dancer Elaine Cancilla. The two met while working together on the hit musical Chicago, a show that marked a pivotal point in Orbach's career. Their relationship brought a fresh and exciting chapter to his life, as they both shared a deep love for the theater and the arts. Elaine's background as a dancer perfectly complemented Orbach's career, and together they became a well-known couple in the Broadway community. Orbach wasn't just a star on the stage. He was also a beloved figure in his New York City neighborhood. His familiar face could often be spotted in local restaurants, shops, and even dry cleaners, where a glossy photo of him graced the walls of Ms. Buffy's French cleaners. He frequented several Italian restaurants in the area, where he became a regular. Beyond his impact in the theater, Orbach's connection to the city was so strong that in 2007, the intersection of 8th Avenue and 53rd Street was renamed in his honor. Though the renaming faced some initial pushback from local zoning boards, the overwhelming support from the community, combined with Orbach's lasting popularity, helped make the tribute possible, further cementing his legacy in New York City's history. Sickness and Death In January 1994, just under two years after joining the iconic TV series Law & Order, Jerry Orbach faced a significant challenge when he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Initially, he underwent radiation therapy, which aimed to eliminate the disease. Unfortunately, by December 1994, the cancer had returned and spread to other parts of his body. In response to this setback, Orbach switched to hormone therapy, a treatment he diligently followed for the next 10 years while continuing to deliver memorable performances as Detective Lenny Briscoe on the show. After wrapping up his time on Law & Order at the end of the 2003-2004 season, he started chemotherapy. Despite his efforts to fight the illness, Orbach ultimately passed away from cancer on December 28, 2004, at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center in New York City at the age of 69. Remarkably, his battle with cancer was kept private and only became public knowledge a few weeks before his passing. Shortly before his death, Orbach had committed to returning as Briscoe for a new spin-off series, Law and Order, Trial by Jury. This new role would have allowed him a more manageable schedule compared to the demanding original series, yet he only managed to appear in the first two episodes, both of which were aired posthumously. His legacy was honored the day after his death when Broadway billboards dimmed as a tribute, a gesture considered one of the highest respects in the American theater community. Additionally, NBC aired a special rebroadcast of the Law and Order episode COD, which was the last episode featuring Orbach. The network also dedicated episodes of Law and Order Criminal Intent and Law and Order Trial by Jury to him, with the episode Mammon, prominently featuring a memorial photo of the beloved actor. Jerry Orbach is survived by his sons, wife, ex-wife, mother, and two grandchildren, Peter and Sarah Kate, the children of his eldest son, Tony. Sadly, his mother passed away on July 28, 2012, at the age of 101. 
Orbach's wife, Elaine, died in 2009 at the age of 69, and his ex-wife, Marta, passed away in 2012 at the age of 79. Throughout his life, Orbach had perfect 2020 vision and made a generous request to donate his eyes after he died. His wish was fulfilled when two individuals received his corneas, one requiring correction for nearsightedness and the other for farsightedness. His image was later featured in an advertising campaign for the Sight Restoration Eye Bank in Manhattan. Jerry Orbach now rests at Trinity Church Cemetery and Mausoleum in Upper Manhattan, leaving behind a legacy that resonates deeply with fans and colleagues alike. Now let's take a closer look at the fascinating real estate portfolio left behind by the talented and beloved Jerry Orbach, tied to his remarkable life and career. Mansion in New York. 20 blocks south of the bustling Times Square, Jerry Orbach's brownstone in Chelsea, New York, is a cozy family home filled with charm and character. In the early 70s, Jerry lived there with his wife, Marta, and their two sons, Tony, eight, and Christopher, then one. Their street was quiet, with summer days punctuated only by the sound of lawnmowers in their neighbors' yards. The Orbach family home is a stunning three-story home that combines elegance and comfort. The exterior is surrounded by gardenias and potted palms. Inside, white rattan furnishings provide a luxurious yet cozy feel, while a fully stocked wine cellar is the perfect setting for intimate gatherings. Plans are in the works for a sauna and sun deck, promising even more luxury and relaxation in the future. One of the standout features of the home is the kitchen, where a 19th century brass panel above the stove draws the eye. The space is not only beautiful but also sentimental, as it evokes memories of the Orbach siblings learning to cook together in their childhood kitchen. The home is located in a vibrant neighborhood filled with creativity and famous faces. Famous actors such as Geraldine Page, Rip Torn, and Anthony Perkins were neighbors of the Orbach family, and the nearby iconic Chelsea Hotel further enhanced the area's vibrant art scene. The Orbach family home exudes a unique blend of quirky and sophisticated, evoking a country-like feel amid the hustle and bustle of the city. Jerry's father ran restaurants on the east side, while Marta's family delights in creating memorable meals in San Francisco. Together, they explore local markets, collecting culinary treasures like hot dogs from Toronto and corn dogs from Los Angeles, treating their dining table as a canvas for international flavors. Their first-floor playroom, decorated in patriotic red, white, and blue, boasts a fun mix of fun props, including a theater mirror, a miniature pinball machine, and a rope swing for Tony. Jerry's love of pool began at age 13, when he likened the skills of a con man to those of an actor, both relying on his wit. To enhance his game, he even reduced the pockets of the pool table in their living room, making each game more challenging and exciting. Each room in the house has its own unique atmosphere. From the entry hall, which resembles a light and dark painting in shades of black, white, and gray, to Christopher's bedroom, which is decorated with quirky wallpaper featuring silvery woodland animals. The room that once housed the baker's union dues is now decorated with plum walls and colorful Killam rugs, while above a 1920s typewriter, posters of Sarah Bernhardt and Marta's California landscapes add a personal touch that reflects the Orbach's artistic flair. The Orbach family's Chelsea Brownstone is a vibrant reflection of their creativity, blending sentimental charm with artistic flair to create a welcoming sanctuary in the heart of New York City. Before Jerry Orbach moved to New York to pursue an acting career, he lived in a house in the Florida. The house sat abandoned for many years, before and after Orbach's death in 2004, and now stands as a quiet reminder of the actor's former life. Despite its association with such a prominent figure in the entertainment industry, the house has been neglected, with no efforts made to restore or preserve it. 
The once vibrant home that witnessed the early stages of Orbach's career now lies empty, slowly succumbing to the passage of time. Abandoned House in the Florida This abandoned house in the Florida has been abandoned and has fallen into a sad state of disrepair, with every corner showing signs of neglect. The once shiny hardwood floors are now scratched and broken, with shards scattered throughout the rooms. The windows that once let in warm sunlight are boarded up, casting eerie shadows across the space. The living room, now shrouded in darkness, has peeling paint and faded walls that show how much time has passed. Outside, the small brick house still stands, though its charm has long since faded. The front door is rotten and damaged from years of harsh weather. The overgrown grass and shrubs that surround the house only add to the home's forlorn, almost haunted look. Inside, the bathroom offers a glimpse into the home's early days, with old tiles and broken fixtures reflecting the same neglect throughout the house. After Jerry Orbach passed away in 2004, the house was inherited by his family. Yet despite its emotional connection to such an important figure, the house remained largely untouched. There may have been many reasons for this. Perhaps the family was overwhelmed by the burden of Orbach's legacy or other personal struggles. Whatever the cause, the house gradually became a forgotten relic, its boarded-up windows and crumbling walls a testament to the passage of time without care or attention. The house now serves as a reminder of how a place, no matter how cherished, can easily deteriorate when neglected. Nature has begun to reclaim the space, and the vibrant energy that once filled the house has been replaced by silence and decay. As we conclude our exploration of Jerry Orbach's life and legacy, I want to personally thank each of you who joined me. His story is one of both triumph and loss, a reminder of the complexity of life. If you enjoyed this insightful article, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your support helps this channel grow and allows us to continue bringing forgotten chapters of history to life. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.